Uh, I'm joined now by Israel's former ambassador to the United Kingdom, Mark Regev. Uh, Mark, thanks for joining us. Uh, how is uh, Israel uh, coping with this horror? Well, you're 100% correct. It's a horror and it's difficult. The country's going through a very difficult period. I don't think we've ever had such an attack, uh, anything like it before, such a, a, a wide uh, a scope of uh, uh, terror attacks across our southern border. Uh, the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, compared it to 9-11, uh, October, sorry, September 1991 attacks in, in the United States. And uh, it's true, the comparison is a good comparison, but if you actually look at the proportion, Israel is 9 million people, while the United States is over 300 million. And, and, and so from a proportional, proportional point of view, it was actually much worse here. Uh, indeed. Can you? How do you anticipate uh, this conflict unfolding? Uh, obviously, Prime Minister Netanyahu has uh, vowed ferocious revenge, and he has every right to do that. Uh, we're hearing reports that uh, the troops are gathering for uh, a, an on-land invasion. Uh, Israel has 173,000 soldiers, 300,000 reservists, who we're hearing are flying in from all over the world to help their country in its hour of need. Obviously, the bombing continues apace. Uh, what are what are exactly are Israel's intentions here? Is it to uh, flatten Gaza? Is it to uh, raise it to the ground? Uh, what does Israel intend to do to Gaza, to Palestine? So we didn't want this war. We didn't start it. But if war has been declared by Hamas against us, we will finish this on our terms. And that has to be a new reality. You know, there are some people in the international community who've been calling for an immediate ceasefire. They hit Israel, Israel bleeds, and then stop it. No. Uh, any sort of, like, a Band-Aid solution, some quick fix. We're just going to be back to square one in a month or two months or, or half a year. There's no point in that. If this war has started, it has to finish in a way that we get a sustainable solution for the long term. And not just, as I say, a, a, a quick fit expand aid that sounds good in a headline and doesn't bring anything really for the people. We want this to end with a new situation in Gaza, a different situation from the one we have today. Now, why is Gaza so dangerous? Because as we saw in the tactics that were used by those bloodthirsty terrorists who crossed the border and butchered our people, with knives burning people alive, uh, uh, lining people up and shooting them indiscriminately. All the terrible things we saw, these are ISIS-type tactics. But unlike ISIS, Hamas has a state sponsor, and that's Iran. And from many ways, that makes Hamas more dangerous than Iran. And so we have to have a situation at the end of this where reality in Gaza is different, and that the terrorists in Gaza will have neither the will or the capability to hurt Israel in the way they did on, on Saturday morning. Um, you spoke in terms of uh, the solution uh, to this uh, crisis. I mean, that's obviously a way off uh, because I think for the time being we can expect uh, extreme attrition on the part of uh, Israel and some retaliation still from Hamas who are still firing their rockets. Uh, but in terms of the solution, what do you mean by that? How would you envisage uh, this solution? What form will it take? Well, to answer that question, let, let me say to you, why did Hamas attack Israel? And then if you can deal with that question, then you can answer the question you asked. Hamas attacked Israel because, one, they want to kill us, and they say that openly. Number two, they wanted to kidnap Israelis to take them hostage. And number three, they wanted to uh, stifle, to destroy historic peace that's going on in the Middle East today. If once the Arab world was united against Israel, it's no longer the case, as you know very well. Arab state after Arab state has been normalizing their ties with Israel. Uh, we've had peace with Egypt and with Jordan. And now in 2020, we had the Abraham Accords breakthroughs, peace with Morocco, with Saudi, sorry, with Morocco, with the UAE, with Bahrain. And now there was talk of peace with Saudi Arabia too. 
which would be a, a game changer, a very important deal because Saudi Arabia has a unique status in the Arab and the Muslim world. Now, all these things are good developments, but as much as people across the world see this extension of the circle of peace in the Middle East as a good thing, for groups like Hamas, peace is an existential threat. And I, I have no doubt that part of their motivation in attacking us on Saturday was their desire to try to stifle the peace feelers between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Backed, of course, by Iran. Now, you were the uh, ambassador for Israel here in the UK. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's been going on back here. Uh, a lot of demonstrations in support of Palestine, which I find extraordinary, given what your poor country has had to suffer at the hands of these thugs. Uh, I, I keep saying I don't even think terrorist is a good enough term for them. They are criminal thugs, uh, guilty of rape, of beheading babies, of executing people on their doorsteps. The atrocities are absolutely outrageous. What do you think, uh, Mark, about the fact that BBC will not call Hamas terrorists? Well, it, it, let's just get to the real world for a moment. Hamas is designated a terrorist organisation not just by the United States, not just by Israel, but by the European Union, by Japan, by Australia, by Canada, and by the United Kingdom. They are officially designated a terrorist organization. That is the legal definition. And, and anyone who had any doubts, yes, people said, well, maybe they used to be, but they've become more moderate. And that the fact that they govern Gaza with its over 2 million inhabitants means that that forces them to be more responsible. Anyone who believed that had a slap in the face on Saturday morning because they showed us very clearly who they are. I mean, if they wanted to moderate, we wouldn't have seen this attack. It's clear they're stuck in an extremist, nihilistic uh, uh, worldview. I mean, what they're doing is not good for the people of Gaza. It's definitely not good for the people of Israel. And, and to answer the previous question that you asked me, if we decisively defeat Hamas now on the battlefield, and I believe we will, if we succeed in degrading and destroying its military capabilities, if we hit its political structure and its control of Gaza in a very, very decisive way, we're taking out of the equation a very dangerous actor, someone who is opposed to peace, someone who is extreme, someone who will, 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 will be in opposition to any possible peace deal in the Middle East. So if, that, if those people are weakened, Maybe that gives more oxygen and more space for the more positive forces to emerge. Uh, and uh, again, your thoughts on the BBC refusing to label Hamas terrorists? Uh, you know, I, I think I, they should. I think they should. Yeah. I think they should, and I'll even say the following. Uh, I heard one report. I think it was the BBC where they say militants have kidnapped people back to Gaza. It's an oxymoron. Militants. Yeah, uh, it's clear the terrorists kidnap people. But I'll, I'll leave you in Britain to have that argument. Uh, it is an argument uh, and it's raging right now. A little word from you, Mark, if you don't mind, about uh, the role of Iran in all of this. You said quite rightly that Hamas don't want peace. Uh, they saw peace, uh, the prospect of peace emerging, uh, and they uh, were determined to ruin that. And to some extent, they've been successful in that endeavour. Uh, but Hamas is funded by Iran. Uh, Hamas doesn't do much without the approval of Iran. Uh, Iran is the puppet master uh, in the background here, isn't it? Well, let's, let's, let's say what's public knowledge. Over the years, if you said, Iran has funded, armed, uh, trained, uh, uh, given uh, weapons to Hamas. Hamas wouldn't be the force it is today without Iranian support. And after the terrible atrocities of the weekend, uh, we saw across the planet almost wall-to-wall -wall condemnation of Hamas's behavior. Even in the Arab world, Arab capitals, not all of them, but important Arab capitals, condemned Hamas's action. And yet there is one capital where they're clapping their hands, where they're applauding Hamas, and that is, of course, Iran. And Iran and Hamas are partners, they're allies. Uh, uh, Hamas has a similar relationship with Hezbollah in Lebanon, another Iranian proxy. 
And so we have to understand the Middle East has many positive things. And we, this peace between Israel and the Arab states is, is very positive. But the forces of darkness, the forces that want to take us back to a, a, a medieval sort of world, the, 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 these extremists, they are the enemies not only of Israel, but they're the enemies of everyone who wants to see peace and cooperation in the Middle East. Uh, you alluded to, to this, uh, Mark, uh, but uh, there is a fear that this conflict will expand. Uh, we've already seen uh, exchanges uh, between Israel and Hezbollah in the north, uh, and uh, Syria seems to be getting involved as well. Uh, we, we know about Egypt as well. Uh, I mean, it, it, do you fear that this conflict could expand uh, and engulf uh, the, the, all of the Middle East? So there's always a chance that this could expand. We have no desire in seeing the conflict expand, but we know it's possible. And we would say to actors in Lebanon, like Hezbollah, who might think this is an opportunity to strike Israel, is I would say to them, we don't want war. But if you attack us, you won't get us by surprise. Uh, we will respond and we will respond forcibly. And you will regret attacking us, I have no doubt that if Hezbollah joins the fight on Hamas's side, that we will prevail and we will be strong. Uh, and stronger than them, that's for sure. Can I ask you a last question, Mark? Uh, President uh, Biden made a speech last night in which he uh, fully endorsed uh, the uh, robust response by Israel, the justified response by Israel uh, to this Hamas horror. Uh, but he also said uh, that the, the, the response from Israel must be within the law. I mean, uh, uh, what do you expect uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu to do here? I would suggest his mission would be virtually to raise Gaza to the ground. Uh, would you expect that he'll go that far? Or will there be any restraint on the part of Israel? So I'll put it this way. There will be no restraint when we deal with attacking the Hamas military machine, when we attack its political leadership, when we attack the organization of Hamas. They have declared themselves not just the enemies of, of Israel, they've declared themselves the enemies of, of all humanity, all civilized humanity, um, through their behavior. And uh, we will hit them back and we'll hit them back out. And I tell you, uh, it's very important that we do so. Because from Israel's perspective, First of all, we want to deal with the very real threat that Hamas proposes, and we want to, as I said, change the situation in Gaza. But the other bad actors in the region are also looking. And if Hezbollah or Iran or any of these other nefarious actors sees uh, Israeli weakness, we'll just see more violence. It's crucial for Israel and for the Middle East that we win this one decisively, and it's clear that Hamas has lost the battle, and that'll be a message to other extremists all over the world. And, and in the Middle East, they'll say, you attack Israel, it's not in your interest to attack Israel, because you will pay a very, very high price.